Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hello, Hazel. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for being on the show. I mean, for inviting me here, Michael. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you here. And just to mention to our listeners, in in case they hadn't already realized, you're all the way from the Philippines. So thank you so much um, in staying up so late, because I know it's very late with you, for coming on the show and recording your interview. I think this may be the first time ever I have somebody from the Philippines. So I'm honored that you're here. Likewise. I'm super excited. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so I'm really, really looking forward to hearing your story. Um, obviously, I've read a little bit about what you do, but it's always best to hear it in context as well. So, Hazel, I only have one question we start with. My listeners know I ask the same question every time, and that is, Hazel, why don't you share your story and how you got to where you are today? Yes, of course. Thank you. I'd love to. Um, so, well, I'm in the Philippines and um, I started out the online business that I have right now. I started out as a side hustle um, way back in 2017, 18. Um, yeah. And then so at the time I was um, I was a, I have a full time job on an outsourcing company. Um, and then I, I'm basically, I was a trainer, a leadership trainer, a product trainer um, in that BPO company. And then because I'm a mom, um, I wanted to have more time with my son because at that point he was about seven-ish uh, yeah. years old. And so I missed a lot of his early years Um because I worked, because it's a it's a BPO company, it's an outsourcing company, and we service American customers at that time with the company that I used to work uh, work for. Um, for all my career, um, I worked in the GY shift, in the graveyard shift, the night shift. That's the reason why um, it's no problem for me to stay up this late. Um, because <laughs> I'm you. <laughs> um, so your, yeah. your body works on a different time zone time clock right <laughs> yeah so, so this is like over a decade i've been working wow like this. so yes, okay so can i just just sorry to interrupt you you did you say bpo bpo yeah business process outsourcing i like thank a con- you yeah thank you for that okay i didn't know what it stood for business process outsourcing so that's yeah. who you worked for correct or you still work for um I used to work for for a BPO company here, right? It's a contact center, and then we serve American customers, um, usually for telecommunications account. Um, and so I'm used to working late. Um, and then because I worked in the night shift, um, and my partner at that time also worked in the same company, um, and he also worked like in the night shift, so we had no way, um. To really, you know, be there for our son and, you know, say goodnight, put him to bed and stuff like that. You know, the usual, typical uh, things that a parent does, um, you know, everything for her kid. Um, So I missed a lot of his early years. And at that time, I've heard a lot about remote work. And um, so I started, you know, I started just diving in, researching about remote work. Uh, remote work so they don't have to go to the office um at that time I was happy just having to replace my income and not be able to go to the office so that I can take care of my son because I don't you know I can stay at home um yes. cook meals for him you know because it's so hard to um find a reliable and trustworthy nanny yes. um, and so what we had to do before was that we had to like drop him off every Monday mm-hmm. before we work at night. We had to drop him, drop him off um, at my partner's mom's house. And then, and he's going to stay there uh, for the entire week yes. until we take her off during the weekend. Wow. So that was set up. 
And there was even a point where I had to like move to a different city, which is about four hours away. And I stayed, that was like the setup um, for over a, over two years. Right. Um, it was just, it was just, you know, um, a stack of different challenging situations that really prompted me to look for a different career outside yes. of um, and at that point in 2017, I started doing some VA virtual assistance work. Right. Um, so I was writing uh, essays for for pennies, <laughs> literally. Um, and I was okay with that because it, you know, um, it gave me the experience that I needed at, at that time. Yes. And then I remember at one point I was asked to write an ebook about passive income. Right. Uh, and that's how I got into the world of online entrepreneurship. Because at that point, I didn't know about it. I just right. thought about things like remote work, um, you know, uh, work from home opportunities. Like you're still an employee um, and you, you're, you're going to work for somebody else and you don't go to like an office, right? That's kind of like my, my perception about it. I didn't know that I can become an online business owner or an online entrepreneur. Yes. But that opened up my my um, my mind to a whole lot of different opportunities online, and that's where I came across ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson, um, and all the others, all the other online marketing gurus, um, which talked about digital. At that point, it was I think eBooks still, and then that was the popular digital products, and then it moved to online courses or digital courses, and I thought. I am a trainer, like this is what I do in my, um, you know, in my full-time job. So right. I thought I can just create a course and sell it. I thought it was just easy, like create it, sell it, and I'm going to make money because <laughs> um, that's what, you know, that's what they said. Um, and so it didn't took me long. It didn't take me long to actually learn that it's not that easy. Um, I can't just like put it out there and people people will start buying the course. Um, so I thought it's it's um it's difficult. Mm. And then and so in 2000, I think late 2017, I met uh my first mentor. Um and he taught me about freelancing. Because at that point, freelancing wasn't as popular as it is now here in the Philippines and so right um, yeah so um I learned about freelancing from him and I thought at first my plan was um because I needed to get money right to earn money um yes. possible so I can quit my job and so I started like I thought I can maybe start with consulting like one-on-one -one clients before I create a course like, yes. I thought to myself, why don't I just create courses for clients instead of me creating a course for myself and selling it? Why don't I just look for clients who need their courses done for them? And yes. I can do it. So that's what I did. That's what I've been doing. Um, so I thought of like, instead of learning a new skill like funnels or website or any other digital marketing skills, I thought of like leveraging my own experience and my own background because it's already something that I'm familiar with. Um, and so I leveraged that. I looked for clients with the help of my mentor and that's where it all started. Um, and right now I'm part of two of my dream clients. Um, and also I um, create online courses for experts like coaches, consultants um, and help them get it out there. Um, so yeah, that's what's, that's like the start. <laughs> that's how I started with my online business. Oh, uh, well, story over, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh yeah, I, I forgot. In 2020, mm. when the pandemic hit, um, mm. like in the middle of the pandemic, that's when I mustered my courage to quit finally my job because I've been meaning to quit for years right. and it took me I don't know maybe over five years before I finally mustered the courage to 
filed my resignation and oh well done I, you yeah well done you yeah so That's you in in your summary you mentioned something about uh i can write a course because training it's what i do so tell me a little bit about what you did in your previous job then that allowed you to become good at training yes so i uh i train um employees in my corporate job right. um I used to be corporate job and yes. so i i would train about or i would facilitate workshops or product trainings um skills training leadership trainings all of those sort um and then from time to time, I would create training materials um, so that we can improve the delivery of the training or right. um, training materials that would address a performance um, challenge in operations and um, you know from from the staff. Um, so that's kind of like my background, and I've been doing it for over a decade at that point. Yes. And so I thought I have like extensive background and knowledge mm. on training and development why don't I just leverage that experience yes. instead of learning a skill so that's sort of like what my what I was thinking when I decided to focus on course creation instead of other skills yeah and did did you six when you then decided I'm going to create my own course and you had this mentor to help you start doing that did you actually create a course yourself or not in the end um no yes and no so i uh -huh. created many courses um because mm. at that point in 2018 i was thinking of this big fancy signature course that i want to um that i want to create because i've been i was comparing myself to these big influencers back then and I thought, if they can do it, why can't I? Mm. So, um, so I thought um, that I'm going to create that, you know, that big signature course. I didn't end up creating one, um, mainly and in all honesty, it's because of fear of um, fear of not being able to pull it off. Yes. <laughs> so that was kind of like what has been holding me back. But I did launch... Um, I did create several mini courses. Um, some of them I give away for free. Um, yeah. of them I partnered with um, like a, a Udemy thing here in like a Udemy version here in the a local Udemy version here in the Philippines. Um, and that's how I get the course published. And then right now I have like two other courses, mini courses um, that I'm preparing to set up that I'm going to sell low ticket course that I'm selling on my, that I plan to sell on my website. Um, but it's nothing like big launch or anything like that. No, yeah. I understand. So just for our listeners, I'll just explain. So udemy.com uh, is a um, self-managed learning platform where teachers, trainers can upload their course. It's very well set up uh it needs to be of high quality uh in the beginning i started on the very very early days the the quality was quite poor but now they're quite strict on the quality audio quality video quality content and yeah. even if your course doesn't get looked at now they say right your course isn't being viewed so goodbye we're taking you off type of thing <laughs> um and yeah they're they're there was a big launch, was a big, not launch, but around the time that you're talking about, maybe even slightly earlier, um, there was this big thing which they call MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, um, M-O-O-C, uh, with an S at the end for plural. And um, it was around that time that I started looking at that seriously kind of digital online courses. I haven't done enough of it. I've always got ideas that I want to do more, um, mm. but it's time consuming, isn't it? And I, and it takes time. Uh, you've got to have the initial idea. You've got to 
be able to then put that together in a format that is easily digestible in short chunks. It needs to make sense. You need to present it via video and audio very well. And uh, yeah, and then you need to know and learn how to upload it how to then yeah. start marketing it and sharing it with people. Um, yeah, there's there's a huge amount involved and can be very, very time consuming. Uh, so I'm not surprised that you got cold feet when you were thinking about this big, big master course and instead started going to mini courses. But even mini courses can be time consuming. So, yeah, well done you. Uh, <laughs> sounds amazing. And well done for having the courage um, to, you know, leave your job and take your role more seriously. Um, what I love is how you've decided to leverage your skill of creating courses and then becoming a freelancer to do that. So tell me a little bit more about your freelancing life, because um you know, nowadays, people following the pandemic, people dream of working from home, being a freelancer, not having to go into the office and, you know, earning some money on the side. Um, and incidentally, obviously, I'm talking a lot here, but I'm kind of painting the context for our listeners as well because I have a little bit of experience. That's why I was interested to, to listen to your story and talk about it. I have a course that I partnered with somebody on who's the kind of subject matter expert, but I helped him create the course. I also did some animations for him. He mm. never paid me, but we went into a partnership agreement. It mm. was a risk for me. It was a lot of effort, it took about six months to create. But this course is still the fastest selling course on Udemy in the area of mind mapping. And every month, although I don't have to do anything anymore to that course, because if he makes he will make any changes if he wants to, I get a I get a notification from PayPal to say, oh, there's been a payout. And I've had to do nothing for a whole month. And I get a little payment coming in each month. And that's a very nice feeling, actually, uh, <laughs> because and that's the power of it, right? Once you've created, once you've created something or engaged with like you as a freelancer to help it get created, then it will just pay out every month. Yeah, you do need to maintain it a little bit and keep it up to date, but yeah, it can be very rewarding indeed. It can be, yeah, especially if you're publishing it on third-party websites. Um, because you don't have to do the marketing yourself. Well, it helps yes. if you promote it outside of the platform. Yes. But they do the entire marketing for you. That's the right. Only, um, the only disadvantage that there is with using platforms like Udemy or Skillshare is that um, the, you don't get to control the price. They can always give massive discounts for your course and you have no control over it. Um, but it's a good starting point, especially if you just want to practice creating a course, because they do have this QA checklist that's going to guide you through the process. Um, yes. And also just to validate demand for your course idea, um, especially if you don't have an audience, you can go ahead and get started there because um, they're going to do they're going to take care of the marketing for you. So that, a really good way to get started. And I also think that as we went through the pandemic and so many things had to go online and people had to teach online via Zoom, um, like the method we're using right now, because, I mean, I was using Zoom years and years before it became popular during the pandemic. It already existed. It was a free product. Yes. Um, you know, you now you can't only stay on for 45 minutes and, you know, you got to refresh and all of that jazz. And now I've got to pay for it, you know, whereas before I had a free product for one to one meetings. But yeah, that's just capitalism for you. I mean, they they capitalized on the success during the pandemic. But because people have been so familiar with creating online life courses, mm -hmm. they're now looking at, oh, 
I did it live. Why can't I do a recorded version of this? True. Right? That's yeah. true. Yeah, so, for sure. so tell us about your freelancing journey then, please, Hazel. How 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 did it go? How did you get started? How did you find your clients? And you know, tell us about the good days and the bad days. Absolutely. Um, so I thought so I started out, I guess, in 2018, early part of 2018. Um, so the first skill that I actually thought of was Facebook ads, because at that point, Facebook was like super popular and everyone was doing Facebook ads. And so I thought I could do Facebook ads um, and I was able to get like a, a case study client. Um, so I'm not going to be paid for it, but I will be able to do the work and kind of like that's drive my, uh, the service. Um, but then something happened. Um, I think she, the, the prospect, um, she mentioned that she was given a nonprofit role. And so she won't be able to kind of like spend time on her business, her own business. And so we had to stop the the project. Yeah. And I think it was a really good, um, pivotal moment for me because that's when I realized that I don't like Facebook ads. I don't like doing it. I don't want to learn it. Um, and so I thought, why don't I just leverage my background on training and development and just create online courses? Because at that point, online courses are starting to get more popular. And so um, so that's what I did. I, uh, what I was taught when, um, when I started was that I should um, do prospecting, uh, prospecting process or pros uh, prospecting strategies. And at that point, Facebook groups are super popular and they worked really wor well before. Like right now it's too saturated, I guess, is, yeah. the, is the term. Um, but that at that point, they're, they were very um, popular and effective. And so I just hang out in a lot of different Facebook groups where my target market hangs out. And at that point, I was targeting coaches. And so um, I met this, you know, a really good lady who, um, and he, she, she said that she wanted to create a course. It's just that she doesn't know how. So she has this idea of what she wants to teach, but then she didn't know how to like map it out, create the content, create this, the materials, all of those things. And so yeah. I'd be happy out. Um, and that was my first project. Um, and I charged, I think, $1,500 for that, for the first project without any prior client experience working as a freelancer, right? Um, so I was able to to close that client. And we I worked with her for, I think, over a year because I also helped her with her emails and other stuff. Um, and that's basically how I got started with um, getting clients. So I was I would just hang out on Facebook groups, engage with the members. Um, and then at that point, I remember I was also doing like free one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions um, just to help out people and get my name out there. Um, and I would create lead magnets um, so I can provide free resources to these um, to my target audience. So that's what I did um, early on. Um, and can then, ask a, can, before yeah. you carry on, so remember where you were when you were hanging out in the Facebook groups and engaging with your potential prospects. You say coaches were probably your target market, right? So you were in groups where there were other coaches in there. Obviously, it's a one dimensional situation. You know, it's text type based engagement, really, in these groups. Did you make comments on discussions? Did you, did you create discussions or did you direct message people? How, how did that work? Um, so I, I did a combination of um, inbound and outbound strategies. So when I say inbound strategies, I would post content on my own timeline and I would also share content on, in those Facebook groups, those who allowed other people to post. Um, yes. 
And the posts are basically just educational content about course creation, the challenges, the problems, um, and then recommended solutions, tips and tricks, all of those good stuff. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, I would engage in the comments as well. So if someone posts a content, I would um, either answer the question, provide an insight, or just cheer, um, cheer the, you know, cheer the whoever posted the content. Um, and then just provide resources to the people. And um, from there, so I would like build that relationships in the comments. And then I would take them to the DMs to um, direct message. And that's where we would continue the conversation. Sometimes I would also create a list of, uh, well, not sometimes, but I created a list of prospects um, of the people that I would connect with in, on Facebook. And that's where I would like get the conversation going. Um, I would DM them, you know, um, letting them know that I'm so I'm glad that we're connected, and then we get to like start the conversation from there. Um, so yeah, that's how I how I started, just really reaching out to people, engaging on Facebook groups, um, and then also sharing valuable content on my own timeline, and then inside the Facebook group. Yeah. So you, you, so what you were doing in effect by doing that, you were building trust relationships yeah. with people. So people started to trust who you are, were at that time in terms of sharing yeah. free content, free advice, free insights, um, you know, becoming a subject matter expert to yeah. get recognized as that. Yes, yeah. and I would also do free training um, mm. with some of the Facebook communities and I would go on podcasts because um, I would meet these. There was a, a Facebook group, I guess. I can't remember exactly, but I think there was a Facebook group, group where um, they were asking for podcast guests and I would reach out um, yes. to the host and say, you know, I would love to be in the podcast and talk about creating courses. And that's how I would get on podcasts. Um, yeah. When I was just starting out. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. You're very brave. Yeah. That, I mean, it's difficult to kind of put yourself out there and kind of go, yeah, I know what I'm talking about, even though you're early on in your journey. Right. Because a lot of any of us, freelancers, entrepreneurs, you know, we all suffer from, you know, imposter syndrome. We look at all of these people that have got their millions and their big houses and their cars and everything else and their fancy holidays. And we kind of go, oh, yeah, we can be like them. But actually, we can't see it yet. It's a long way off. And whether you've got dreams or not to be wealthy um, when you start on your journey, you kind of feel, oh, yeah, but there are better people out there. I don't know everything yet, and I'm going to be compared against those other people. And that makes it really tough <laughs> to get started, doesn't it? Yes, yes. So, um, I couldn't count how many times imposter syndrome has held me back and still does. Even now, it still does. Mm. Um, yeah. the, and that's the reason why I love going on podcasts and doing training because that's my that's kind of like my what I love at doing um, rather than going on social and you know because I'm an introvert so right a lot of energy for me to reach yes. out to yeah um, and then also I'm not sure if, you know, others can relate, but sometimes I would go on social media and I would see a lot of different people posting their wins and what's going on in their lives. And that mm. sort of creates this negative tr a trigger that would, yeah. um, a trigger that, um, that would trigger my um, negative narrative about I'm not doing enough or I should be doing that. So there's this huge comparison um, and imposter syndrome if I'm going to, if I stay on social media for too long. And so I've been, since last year, I've been very intentional in terms of using social media. Um, so that's the reason why I love like doing this because um, it's more intimate. Um, yeah. 
yeah and because I love teaching that's the reason why I love uh, doing guest trainings too got you and um what you make a really really good point because um as trainers we I mean every single person whether they've been in a job in a business or they have a particular skill or learn something they all have the ability to create some content yes. to be able to you know get their teaching out into the world and the I'm glad you've mentioned how the imposter syndrome sometimes holds you back because I think it can hold any of us back Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to people when they want to put a course together uh, with somebody like yourself? And do you help them to overcome that barrier as well? Um, I wouldn't say overcome that barrier. I'm not so sure if I'm, if I'm, if, I actually do that, but what I would normally do um, yeah. that I help them out in terms of the actual creation of the curriculum. And then also just letting them know that they have existing resources and they have existing knowledge that they can package into a valuable online course. Um, and if done right, it can create massive value to the people that they want to help. Um, mm -hmm. And then also create additional income in their in their business. Yeah, I think that's a really neat way of presenting it to people. I mean, if if any listeners out there, they have a good idea, but they just haven't got a clue how to even get started. But they haven't got the confidence to create a course or haven't got the skills to do digital stuff. Um. Do you offer people like a, an initial consultation so they can talk things through with you? And how would that work? Yes. Um, so I do, before I even sign on a client, I would do like what we call a discovery call or a strategy session where I'm going to look at where we're, we I talk with potential client and see what he or she wants to achieve. Um, if she already has, he or she already has a course idea um and what made him or her want to create a course all these other details um for me to see if she is ready he or she is ready to create a course and if it's a good fit um but yeah that's what i right. do that's great yeah and do you in terms of your freelancing offer are you on a platform online or how can pe how do people discover you generally um i have my website and then also i do a lot of this <laughs> yes podcast, yes um and guest interviews um because i usually do the email outreach um or my va does and then also um on facebook because i'm also on um instagram and facebook what about linkedin are you active on linkedin um, I do have a profile on LinkedIn. I'm not using it a lot. Um, mm. I'm just not getting traction there. And so, right. and not a lot of, well, professional coaches do hang out yeah. on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. But I tend to work with business and uh, personal development coaches. Um, right. And they're mostly on Facebook or Instagram. Are they really? That's interesting. I would have thought they were on LinkedIn more rather yeah, than active on facebook so yeah um so based on experience um the ones that i usually get to like interact on linkedin are those who are just starting out with digital right marketing business so they're just starting out um and i personally do not recommend an online course if you're just starting out um no. One, you don't have an audience. Second, there's no trust factor yet. You don't have any relationships yet. Although yeah. it is possible, mm. it is possible to get a course launched and created and have and be successful um, as your first product. 
Um, but the easiest way is to get like a one-on-one -on -one or a group uh, program first so that you can validate your market, you can validate your offer, and then you can validate your own process or framework. And then once that's working, then we can switch to one-to-many. Um, yeah. yeah, that's what I usually recommend. Okay. Okay. Great. Sounds incredible. And honestly, how how do you think, how many years have you been doing it now? And how do you think if you were to uh, critique yourself, how do you think it's going right now? I would say, I would say seven or eight, um, because I'm, I'm pretty ambitious of a person. And so I yes. have like massive goals, especially this year. Um, so I'm, because I started productizing my services. And so I just want to really have that taken care of this year, like really systematize everything. Yes. Um, then also this year, I'm switching to a different market. So instead of just coaches and client, uh, coaches and consultants, um, now I want to take it to companies um, like small and medium enterprises. Because um, at least locally here in Asia Pacific, not everybody, like there's still a, a big percentage of SME small to medium enterprises who are not leveraging digital training. Um, and so it would be nice to help them out transition to the digital um, learning world um, so that they can cut down their costs. So that's one of the plans that I have uh, this year to to grow. Um, but yeah, I think seven or eight. <laughs> OK, that's very honest of you. And um, so do, do you want to share some of the goals you have or are they kind of secrets? Yeah, sure. No worries. Um, so this year, my goal really is to like um invest because I splurged <laughs> last year. And so <laughs> this year I really just want to save and invest. Um, so I'm investing in a rental property and then also because passive income. Well, semi passive. Yes. Um, so that's one. And then also um buying my my dream house this year. So those are like two massive investments. And so um, I need to, that's why the goals, the financial goals are, are big this year. Compared, yes. But yeah, those are the goals. Great. Well, I mean, it's good. Yeah. So we need, you know, anybody who wants a digital course, contact Hazel June. She can help you and you can help her achieve her big, massive goals this year. <laughs> Us. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> absolutely i mean more people need to do it i totally agree with you i see so many people that are you know sitting on the fence about this um i do something i'm working with uh, a client but it's also a hobby of mine i do japanese taiko drumming have you seen it no i haven't haven't you oh gosh you'll, you'll have to look it up on uh the, the the best uh, group of Japanese taiko drumming in they're in Japan called Kodo K O D O. Look it up on Google, and you'll see the amazing drums with Japanese taiko drums. So I've been doing that for a few years, and I'm currently working. It's a slow process, but because uh, I helped my teacher through lockdown because he wasn't very digital literate. And yeah. I saved his business by having him teach online yes. uh, via Zoom. And he has lots of recordings and videos I helped him create. So we're yeah. now creating a brand new course over the next six months or so mm -hmm. uh, that we can then sell and market. And right. we, I did introduce him to Udemy and we're, we're not going that route yet. We want to do one, get a course on our on his website, on the website I've created for him. And we'll do it there first and through like a WordPress app uh, yeah. plugin type thing. And then um, and then if that goes well, then we'll probably go to Udemy with a like a smaller course, like an introductory course. But, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting that live sometime this year. So that's my goal on the digital course anyway. Okay. <laughs> That is yeah. awesome. That's great. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a totally different type of market. And um, there are not many taiko drummers around the world. So we don't know how successful it will be. 
uh, but it's a passion and yeah, we want to see how it can go. So, but Hazel, I've really enjoyed listening to, to everything that you're doing. Have I, should I have asked something that I haven't asked that you wanted to share with me today? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I, I can't think of anything. Thank okay, you. that's great. Well, no problem at all. Would you like to share how people can get in touch with you so they can get their digital course out there? Yes, absolutely. Um, so my website is hazeljune.com. So it's hazel and J-U-N-E dot com. Um, and then I have a free course creation workflow. So you don't have to like guess what you need to do first, what you do, what you need to do next and stuff like that. Um, it's my own course creation framework. It's all in a project management uh, board. So you know exactly what to do. Um, so you can get that workflow um, by going to hazeljune.com forward slash workflow. Um, and you can get access to the Trello board for, for the workflow. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Um, so are you are you a big fan of Trello and kind of that project management? I am for content management, like all right. of my social media content, I post it in there um, and workflow like that, like high level workflow. Yeah. But for specific projects like with details and stuff, I love Asana more. Asano, okay. Asana. Right, right, right. Asana, yeah, Asana. Okay, great. Okay, great. Yeah, kind of a different flavor of the same thing, but it's, <laughs> yeah, I, I love all these kind of, yeah, it allows you to keep track of, of things in that way, which is pretty good. Pretty good indeed. It is. Okay, fantastic. What about any, um, you know, social channels that you'd like people to connect with you on? Yes. So on Facebook and Instagram, I'm at AM Hazel June. Um, so that is like my, my profile. And then also I'm launching my my podcast and YouTube channel this year, hopefully this quarter, because um, I'm planning to launch a mastermind um, towards the end of the year. Um, so, yeah, so I'm doing that. So what's your podcast going to be about? It's about running experiments on personal development and business. So basically, the um, I'm I'm experimenting on this strategy, this outreach strategy. I'm and I'm sort of like documenting my the behind the scenes of of doing that. Um, and that's what the mastermind is going to be. Okay, but the mastermind is at the end of the year. You say yes. Yeah. So it's a mastermind. Um. And it's going to be about what I'm going to be doing this year, because this year is all about experimentation and iteration for me. Um, yeah. At least that strategy, outreach strategy that I want to be doing. Um, and then the YouTube channel is all about documenting that. Because um, wow. I really want to, one of my goals is like, you know how earlier we talked about um, imposter syndrome. And I guess one of the reasons why a lot of people feel imposter syndrome is because we have this this um version of success that we think we want um yes. and that gotta be good you gotta look good you gotta be perfect and all of these you know this stuff and <laughs> one of the goals is that I want to normalize fears um I want to normalize um not being perfect. I want to normalize failures and committing mistakes because it's rarely talk about in the online entrepreneurship world. Everybody wants to look perfect um, and put together like every single day when if you're running a business, it's not. It's a, you know, it's ebbs and flows. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what the, the YouTube channel is going to be about. And is that just going to be documenting? So the YouTube channel, you say podcast. So yeah, so it's going to be a, so I plan to create the video, publish it on YouTube, and then transfer it to an audio file so that it's going to be a podcast as well. Um, Got you. Yeah. And is that just going to be you or are you going to have guests on it? I would have guests on it. I would love to have you there. If you have availability this year. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to yeah. be on there. Yeah. 
Yes, um, because I want to talk about personal development a lot as well. Um, and yeah, just the behind the scenes of running a business. Yeah, well, I love personal development. Yeah, I discovered personal development about 18, 15, 19 years ago. And that's when my journey started with personal development. So always interested in personal development topics. Yeah. Lots of failures along the way. I promise you. Yeah. I can share lots of failures and yeah. some good times too, but they're all learnings. There's no such thing as failure. It's all growth, isn't it? At the end of the day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, for sure. That's the reason why I love the word experiment because it doesn't put it, it creates this space of like, yeah. Um, just allowing yourself to commit mistakes and learn from them. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's one of the biggest language shifts that I've learned this last year. Uh, so instead of saying I have to perform or I have to execute, I have to implement, I say, I need to experiment. Um, so it's nice. just a little, yeah. Nice. And do you know the name for the podcast yet? I don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I released the podcast last year and it's all about skill monetization and a little bit of uh, personal development. And I call it you're a badass. Um, but then <laughs> we all, because <laughs> I love the word badass. That's my kind of like my identity uh, thing. Um, right. and, uh, but we know that Jen Sincero wrote like a series of books about you're a badass in making money, you're a badass. And so um, I want to make sure that, you know, it's a totally different brand. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about badass goal getters. Um as the as the as the name but i'm I'm not i'm not sure yet right but there okay. will be a bias there <laughs> for sure mm. i i think i think uh i hope our listeners don't mind us brainstorming on this a little bit and maybe they can write into you with some ideas too but i think yeah. because you talked about experimentation mm -hmm. somehow i think it would be good to have that word in there somewhere yeah you know um or you know badass experimenter or you know experimenting badass style i'm not even sure that badass needs to be in there i know it's your favorite word but it's that experimenting i really love what you said about oh, what's the saying for it it's kind of reframing yeah. you know you're reframing imposter syndrome you're reframing failure you're reframing making mistakes uh you reframing having to be perfect and all of those things and i love experimentation too and that's what i do a lot of in my life you know with lots of things that i've kind of gone towards uh, it's 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 basically an experiment let's see what happens type of thing yeah Exactly. It doesn't exactly. always go right, you know, don't always make money from it or anything like that. But sometimes I kind of go, well, as long as I've got food on the table, it's okay <laughs> type of thing. But, <laughs> yeah. um, not ideal a lot of the time either. But wow, Hazel, I've, I really, really have enjoyed listening to your story and yeah, having a good old chat with you about all of this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I wish you so much success during this year. I hope you meet your goals. Please keep in touch and let us know how it's going. Let us know when the podcast is out and uh, share the links with me in the YouTube channel. And I'll make sure I will revisit the show notes and put them back, it, put them in there. Uh, oh, thank so you. So that if anybody stumbles across your podcast interview, they'll find the new material as well for you. Amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, Hazel. Thank you for staying up so late all the way in the Philippines. I really appreciate it. And uh, bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.